Good choice. D N E E H T, right? Widlowski smiled. Abby sauntered over Hey Bulldog and lifted his paws, dancing with him for a moment before letting him back down. A narrow strap of her dress fell over her upper arm, but she didn't make any effort to fix it. Plan on cutting in, or am I dancing with a dog all night? I was last song on their last album. Last song they all played together too. Mm, seems like you think about endings a lot. Comes with the territory at my age. <laughs> oh, you're not that old. <laughs> She sat down on his lap, legs draped over the side. She leaned in as if to kiss him when her phone rang. You okay, your majesty? Great, no worries. Sorry, the band checking in on me. Your majesty? <laughs> Something they call me sometimes. No relation to the queen. <laughs> She went to resume kissing, but he slid out from under her and stood up, looking concerned. What's wrong? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's nothing. For a second, I thought I, I don't even know what I thought. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah just uh, a lot of memories. You, you just reminded me of, uh, or oh, are you, uh, I, I was being stupid. I remind you of whom? It doesn't matter. It's over. All of it. It's been over for a long time. I'm really sorry. I, I've made a bit of fool of myself. Abby studied Widlowski's face. She rose, removed the record, and knelt beside Widlowski. Tell me about her. No, I don't think it's a good idea. It's okay. I want to know. Widlowski looked at her, feeling, hearing, and seeing things that he had tried to ignore for years. Events that had worked to shape his very life, here and there. It was a painful time. Yet even in those direst of straits, he could remember the warmth of that hand in his, the soft, sweet taste of those lips when they kissed. He could hear the marching, louder, closer. It was in unison, as was expected of those conquered by the communist regime. The sound from all those boots rose thunderously, replacing the fun, lively music he had surrounded himself with. He parted his lips, wanting to tell her that it wasn't a good idea again, but he found himself saying something else entirely. It was back in Zagoria, its capital Grasks town square in the mid-sixties. I was a teenager marching side by side with my friend Drug in a socialist pioneer parade along with hundreds of others. Back in the mid-sixties, Mikhail Vetrovsky, a teenager, had no doubt why the Chervona square was red and not green or blue or yellow. Chervona meant red in Zagoria and was named after the red square in Moscow, USSR. The flag of that country was scarlet, the Kremlin walls were burgundy, and when he visited there as a small boy, he saw lots of flags and stars and posters all reeking red. The tour guide lady immediately provided an alternative explanation. The word red in Russian had a second meaning of beautiful. So it might simply be a beautiful square. But later he learned about the Lobnaya Mesta right in front of the St. Basil's Cathedral, a place where in old times cruel beheadings took place, injecting blood into the name of the square. Stuck at the edge of the immense space among thousands and thousands of young pioneers marching on a spring parade, he took in careful unison with the boys and girls who marched alongside him. He could see her, clearly, marching in the next row, right ahead and slightly to the left of him. Her pale blonde hair, slender build, and soft, radiant smile peeking out every few moments as she slipped her hands into the pocket of her apron. She turned, feeling his stare, and smiled. He felt a sharp kick in his right rib by an elbow of who else but Drug marching next to him, evidently noticing the girl's glance. When they were just about to pass the central stage with the high-ranking communist officials looking tiny at the top of it, the girl suddenly turned to him 
pulled something out of the large pocket in her white apron and showed it to him. It was a photo. And what a photo it was! It was a photograph of the Beatles on a boat. 